Well, hello and welcome to Explore Classroom, folks. My name is Celeste Harrison and I'll be your host today. Here at National Geographic, we believe in the power of exploration and wonder and storytelling to change our world for the better. This Explore Classroom YouTube show connects students from all over the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and plenty of time for all of your student questions. Today, our Explorer is Munaza alum. She is amazing. I'm so thrilled to introduce you all to her because she has truly one of the absolute coolest jobs around. I'm full-blown envious. She is an astronomer on a mission to find the next Earth-like planet. She uses giant telescopes to search for signs of hidden planets and to uncover all kinds of cool facts about our universe. Today, she's going to help us understand the scale of planetary systems and introduce us to some of our own solar system's neighbors. And she's also going to highlight some of the, just the neat things out there in space that she studies. But before we get into today's lesson and our Q&A on planetary systems, let's welcome all the friends we have joining us from around the world. Our shout outs for today go to Abby, the Goder Homeschool, Astronomy HST, Gloria Middle School, Kellogg's, Noel Grisham Middle, Burner Trail Junior Public School, Duke of Conant, J.S. Buchanan, FIPS, PS 151, the Mary D. Carter School, Queen Anne Elementary, Hawthorne Elementary, St. Hubert's, Dar Abda, Robert Schell, uh, Inter-American Academy, St. Teresa of Calcutta, Alfitra, Pierre Elliott Trudeau High School, the Lab School, the Foothill Ranch Elementary, the Cognition Club, the International Community School, the International Sharing School, Merang JSS, Hillard Tharp sixth graders, Mary Hogan students, ICS, Alden School, John E. White Elementary, Cleveland Early College Prep, Milagro Middle, Maria School, and the American School. We are thrilled to have all of you here today. And since it's the very beginning of our new season of Explore Classroom, I have a special ask for all the teachers out there. Please help us spread the word. I know that you teachers share our goal to inspire the next generation of explorers. So we'd love it if you would invite a colleague or a friend to join you here on Explore Classroom this month. Help us get the word out there to more educators so we can get more students that direct access to our National Geographic Explorers. But with all of that talking for me out of the way, it is time Let's get this Explorer classroom started. I'm gonna turn it over to our Explorer, Manaza, to teach us a little bit about space. Take it away. Awesome. And I'm seeing your screen share come through. So we got that okay. going for us. Perfect, thank you so much for that introduction, Celeste. And hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. So as Celeste mentioned, I am an astronomer studying planets beyond the solar system. But today, I want to tell you a little bit about our neighbors in space, as well as those beyond, and why I think these faraway worlds are so fascinating. But before we get started, let's start a little closer to home, literally. This is our home, planet Earth. Now you may not be used to looking at Earth like this, and that's because you live somewhere on this planet. For example, I'm here in Washington, DC, but you might be here or here or even here. So depending where on Earth you are, when you go outside, you might catch a glimpse of an open sky or a beautiful blue ocean or a skyline of buildings. But thinking a little bit more big picture, if we zoom out, we can better understand our place in the solar system. We can think of the solar system as our neighborhood in space, which makes the other planets in the solar system our neighbors. We have a special bond with the other planets in the solar system because these planets and the Earth and the Sun all formed from the same material a long time ago, something like four and a half billion years ago. It's very old. But even though our neighbors formed from the same material, these planets are so different from our own. We know that the earth is special because it hosts life like us, as well as the plants and animals that we see around us. But there are also a lot of really cool things about our neighbors in space. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit about them today. We don't have that much time to go into detail, so I'm gonna tell you one fact about each of these planets. 
All right, let's start in closest to the sun and move on out. So we'll start with Mercury. So Mercury is our closest space neighbor and is the closest to the sun. And um, it's actually the smallest planet in the solar system. And because it's so close to the sun, it's also really hot. And it's got temperatures that can reach about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, we'd definitely not be able to survive there. Next up is our next door neighbor, Venus, which is actually the hottest planet in the solar system. And that's interesting because even though Venus isn't the closest to the sun, it's the hottest planet because it's got these really thick clouds on it. And the clouds actually trap heat from the sun below them. And so that heats up the surface of Venus and makes it really hot. And interestingly enough, the clouds on Venus are also neat because they aren't made of water like the clouds that you might see when you go outside. These clouds are made of sulfuric acid. On our other side is our other next door neighbor, Mars, which is also called the red planet. And Mars gets its color from the dust on its surface that is rich in iron. One of the neatest things about Mars is that it's home to the largest volcano in the solar system. And that volcano is called Olympus Mons. To get a sense of the, the scale and the size of Olympus Mons, it's really big, so it's about the size of the state of Arizona, and it's also really tall. It's about three times as tall as Mount Everest, which is the, the tallest peak on Earth. Then we have Jupiter, which is moving into a, a different type of planet in the solar system. So the ones that we just looked at, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, these are all we call terrestrial or kind of rocky planets. But Jupiter um, is what we call a gas giant. So it's called that because it's giant. Actually, Jupiter is uh, the biggest planet in the solar system, but also it's primarily made of gases um, like hydrogen and helium. Jupiter is really cool because it's got dozens of moons um, and a large ocean, but the oceans, because this planet is primarily made of hydrogen and helium, are actually made of liquid hydrogen instead of liquid water like they are on Earth. Jupiter also has a really cool storm called the Great Red Spot, which has been observed for hundreds of years. Now we get to my favorite planet, Saturn, which I think is so majestic with its yellow color and its rings. And this is actually a real picture of Saturn that was taken with the Cassini spacecraft. So the, what we can see is that the rings of Saturn um, are, are quite prominent. And these rings are made up of billions of particles of ice um, and rocks. And my favorite fact about Saturn is that even though it's so large, it's really light. In fact, it's so light that if you found a swimming pool big enough to fit Saturn inside of it, and you put Saturn in it, the planet would float. When I found that out, I was blown away. Then we have Uranus, which is an ice giant planet. So it's also a large planet, but instead of being primarily made of gases, it's primarily made of ices, um, of molecules like ammonia and methane. And the cool thing about Uranus is that something at some point in its lifetime actually hit Uranus and kicked it on its side. So it orbits on its side and it kind of looks like a ball rolling around the solar system. And Uranus is actually also the coldest planet in the solar system. And we think that might have something to do with it being on its side, although we don't know for sure. And then lastly, we've got Neptune, which is another ice giant. And Neptune is so far away from the sun that it takes four hours for sunlight to reach it. And when that sunlight does reach Neptune, that light is about 900 times dimmer than it would be on Earth. And that's because it's so far away. So now you've met all of our space neighbors. But what's even more interesting is that in our solar system, we see this diversity of different planets that are so different from the Earth. But our solar system is just one of many in the Milky Way galaxy. In fact, planets are everywhere. And today, 
we actually know that there are more planets out there than there are stars. The planets outside of the solar system are what we call exoplanets, and these are the faraway worlds that I study. And I think exoplanets are really neat because they're so different from any of our neighbors in the solar system. In fact, the very first exoplanet was what we call a hot Jupiter, meaning that it was similar to our solar system's Jupiter in terms of being a ga in terms of being gaseous and giant, but it was so close into its star that it was really hot. So that was very surprising for us. Um, but then we started to realize that planets beyond the solar system are also very different. And we started kind of learning more about them. Now, I introduced you to all of our solar neighbors, but I can't introduce you to all of the exoplanets out there. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, there are thousands of them and we just don't have the time for that. But also we don't know much about these worlds just yet. They're far away. And there are also so many other planets that are waiting to be discovered. So even if I did explain, it would be incomplete because it's not a full picture of all of the planets out there. So while I can't do a full introduction for the exoplanets, I can at least tell you about a few of my favorites. So the first is called Trace 2b, which is a bit of a boring name, but it has a really awesome nickname, and that's the Charcoal Planet. We call this planet the Charcoal Planet because it's so dark, it's charcoal black. And this is an artist's depiction here of the planet, um, and the planet was discovered about 13 years ago, and it's about 750 light years away. This is actually the darkest planet that we've ever found because it doesn't reflect any light. But if we could see this planet up close, it would actually look like a nearly black ball of gas with a slightly red glow. So this is a really mysterious planet and we don't know anything about it really in terms of what the conditions are like on this planet or if it has an atmosphere or what it's made of. But I would absolutely love to find out. Another one of my favorites is called HD 189733b. And a side note, if you're interested in why the names of these planets um, are kind of these funny combinations of letters and numbers, uh, ask me at the end because um, I think it's, it's a little bit interesting. Um, so HD 189733b is 63 light years away from us and it was discovered back in 2005. And this planet is known to have a lot of clouds on it that rain very often. But it turns out that the raindrops on this planet are made of glass. But the planet is also so hot that the glass is actually a little bit melted. So when I heard this, I couldn't even wrap my head around it. And last, but certainly not least, is my hands down all time favorite planet, a hot Jupiter called Hat P7b. And I think this planet is so cool because the raindrops on this planet are made of the same thing that rubies and sapphires are made of. And this sounds like a science fiction world or something out of a fairy tale, but this is actually a real planet in our universe, in our galaxy even. And since this planet is also very windy and stormy, the raindrops on it would actually be blown across the planet. So if you were to be looking at this planet from space, it would be really glittery and sparkly. So when you think about these interesting exoplanets, it reminds me that nature's creativity doesn't have any limits. But then it also takes me back home. Because when I think about the natural beauty of our own home planet with beautiful lakes and glaciers and volcanoes and forests, and all the different plants and animals that live in these places, it reminds me just how special our planet is. So whether it's on this planet or beyond, there's so much out there that's waiting to be discovered. So keep looking up and keep looking out because you never know what you might discover. Amazing, well, Manaza, we like to end with the same question every episode. Do you have any advice for the young explorers out there joining us today? I'd say keep looking up and keep looking out. 
There's so much to discover and to learn and to contribute to, not just beyond this planet, but also on this planet, not just in science, but in you know history and politics and uh, art, literature, whatever you're interested in. Just go do it, follow your dream. Amazing advice and an amazing presentation. Thank you so much. Minaza, thank you for doing this cool work. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with us and to share it. Teachers, thanks for making cool stuff like this happen for your students and students. Thank you most of all. Your questions are always brilliant and exciting and thoughtful and they really make this as fun as it is. So um, if you're out there and you just can't get enough space, please check out this month's National Geographic magazine in print or online for a fabulous new visualization of our solar system. It looks very different than what you've maybe seen on a poster in your classroom. It's very cool. Um, teachers, you should also check out our new virtual field trip about our solar system and beyond. In it, you can hear even more from Manaza and get an up-close look at a lot of different space exploration work. We'll be back here next week on Explore Classroom. Same time, same place, same day, but with another all new amazing Explorer. Register your class for a shout out during the event and a chance to be up here on screen asking your questions face to face. Next week, we're gonna learn about the twilight zone of the ocean. And the week after that, we're gonna learn about how scientists track elephant seals. And the week after that, we're looking at plastic pollution. So lots of cool things are coming up. We would love to see you there. As a reminder, teachers, you can check out many, many more free and amazing educational resources at natgeoed.org, including tons of fabulous free professional development opportunities. Check out the list for this fall. I wanna wish everyone a very happy Hispanic Latinx Heritage Month. Have a great day, stay curious, keep exploring, and head on back to regular school. We'll see you next time. Bye folks.